Hello, I'm Anatole, and this is my review of Swamp Thing Season 1, Episode 4, titled Darkness on the Edge of Town, which is the name of a Bruce Springsteen song. I'm not sure if that is coincidental or intentional. It received a score of 10.0 on IMDb, and plot summary, courtesy of IMDb. Abby's return to the town drags up her dark past with the Sunderlands. While the Swamp Thing senses a growing darkness within the swamp, we learn more about Daniel Cassidy. And rather than dealing with the plot of Rudru and Sunderland, we get a little bit of a diversion, which is a Monster of the Week story. And I had a couple issues with this. For one, I, I have more than a couple then. One point, and this is not the filmmaker's fault, the filmmakers thought they had a 13-episode season contract, but in a 10-episode season, this is the kind of episode that could be completely written out because it doesn't move the plot of the other characters forward. And I'm all, I'm all for one-off episodes, bottle episodes, but if you are already having problems telling your story within a season length, which they did because of losing the 13 episodes, then an episode like this is a detriment. That was one problem I had. That is not the filmmaker's fault. However, the plotting I really thought missed was a missed opportunity. I, th I think the idea that Sunderland is a, benef a dark benefactor for this town and that while he keeps it prospering, he all, through his economic beneficence, his, his ulterior motives also create the maleficence the, the malefic maleficence sorry that exists through in the throughout the town so this we, we get we get the the plot it's a big exposition dump info dump from the reporter i can't remember her name i think it's uh, Luc lucilla lucilla uh, it's uh, abby's friend from the town that this disease began with a World War I veteran and passed among different people until someone in the town got it and went off and died on their own. And my problem with that is it doesn't, it, it doesn't involve Sunderland. It doesn't involve any of the characters. So it's a missed opportunity to further define those characters. Instead of two guys out there cutting down logs, one of whom coincidentally is the short order chef in the restaurant, the, the Greasy Spoon restaurant that Lucilla, Lucilla works at, which is all this coincidence drives me crazy. I really don't like contrived plots. Instead, it could have been much tighter. It could have been, that was a an employee of Sunderland. Sunderland was doing his funding of weird experiments and the person who was infected by some early prototype of the chemical that is now infecting a swamp went off on his own and uh, and his friends or a couple goons hired by Sunderland went looking for him and we see him at, at the at the the drag's end of his life and that's when he attacks one of the people so instead of having this clumsy attempt to make a dead body f fall from a tree and you, gravity doesn't work that you're going to you're going to bite and and leave this long mark like like he did unless there is the supernatural involved so that was my second second problem was that the supernatural element should have been much stronger instead of leaving it to appear as though the this disease even though it's partly supernatural makes the victims go crazy out of their head and rapidly attack others it should have been apparent that they are possessed. They are possessed by, by a force from another world, and that's when they attack and pass on the disease. That way, if you wanted to have a dead body attack a human, you could make it look like it's been possessed by, by some force. I, I think the, the force that the Swamp Thing alludes to that, that's supposed to be taking advantage of the disease is the rot. I don't know, but that's my suspicion that the rot will be one of the one of the key protagonists of the of the season because we've already gotten allusions to it in episode three. 
So the, the, those are my thoughts. Also, we didn't get much plot development. There was a little bit with Cassidy in his scene with Xanadu, Madame Xanadu. So I think that was the only bit of plot development we got. There was a little bit of rapprochement between Abby and, and Swamp Thing, but not, not really. Whatever exists there was not advanced in the story. So we had one scene where, where Cassidy is talking to, who's going to be the Boo Devil, was talking to Madame Xanadu, and he comes to some understanding about his role in the town. So that counts as character development. But otherwise, we had the Monster of the Week, and, oh, and um, the, the little girl, I believe she's Susie, uh, yeah, Susie Coyle, he appears to be taken under the wing of the Sunderlands. So those were the, the two major plot developments. Uh, yeah, I, not, not a strong episode for me. I think this 10.0 on IMDb is not warranted. It is a, a smaller voting base, only 109. So I'm curious if I come back to check in a few days if the score will be the same. I don't think so. It's kind of really almost impossible to maintain that score of, of a perfect 10. So we'll have to see. I will check back in a, a few days to see where that rating is after more people have voted. So that's my thought on Swamp Thing, Darkness on the Edge of Town. I hope you enjoyed it and that if you have any thoughts about my criticisms or any other Thoughts on the episode, please share them in the comments below. Until next episode, take care and be well. Goodbye. Checking sound and visuals, the visuals, the visuals, the visuals. Now we're going to talk about the visuals, the habituals, residuals, and I'm thinking of the midjuals, individuals. And I'm going to keep rhyming for the pigeons, the pigeons, the visuals, the kidjuals, the sigils.